Good day everyone, my name is Teacher Claire. Welcome to another lesson on assessment of learning. In our previous lesson, we discussed about validity. Today, we will discuss reliability. The learning objective of today's lesson is to explain the meaning and types of reliability. When it comes to gauging teachers may test, there are two important concepts that we must remember. One is reliability and the other is validity. Take note, they are not the same. Reliability has to do with the question, does the teacher's made test yield consistent results? So the word consistency is central to reliability. And there are various ways to gauge consistency. Validity, on the other hand, has to do with the question, does the teacher's test actually measure what is designed to measure? This indicates that truthfulness is really the key word that is tied to validity. And there are various means to gauge truthfulness as well. As mentioned, reliability is consistency and consistency is measured in various ways. Take note that each type of reliability is concerned with determining the consistency of data in a different way. Likewise, bear in mind that reliability is focused on the consistency of data and not on the characteristics of the instrument. The four common types of reliability that I will be discussing are the test with test reliability, which is used to gauge the consistency of data across administrations. Second, parallel forms reliability, which is used to gauge the consistency of data across forms or versions. Third, we have inter-rater reliability, which is used to gauge the consistency of data across raters and internal consistency reliability, which is used to gauge the consistency of data across responses. A test retest reliability is used to gauge consistency of scores over time to the same person or group at different time or period. It must be noted, however, that a reliable test should yield similar scores or data over time. For instance, you take the IQ test and the score is 120. Then after 7 months, you take the same test again but got a score of 90. Do you think this test is reliable? I think not. In solving for the test retest reliability, we can use Spearman rank correlation coefficient or Spearman raw to correlate the scores of this type. For example, here are the scores of 10 students in first administration under column X and second administration under column Y. First, we must rank the scores from highest to lowest. For the first administration, the highest score, which is ranked 1, is 44, while in the second administration is 42. Secondly, we get the difference of their ranks. We get 0 since we have 1 minus 1, and above it, the difference is negative 1.5 since we have 7.5 minus 9. Next, we solve for the d square. We got 0 since the square of 0 is 0. We also got 2.25 since it's the square of negative 1.5. Same mechanics is done with the other scores. After which, we get the sum of the d squared. Thus, we have 8.5. Once done, we can now substitute the values of our Spearman raw formula. We got 1000 since our n is equal to 10 and the cube of 10 is 1000. As we do the calculation, the result is 0 0.95. Based on the table, the degree of consistency of the test retest result is very high. Thus, the reliability of the test result is very high. 
Next, we have the parallel forms, which is used to gauge the consistency of data across forms or versions. So, we are measuring the correlation of scores or data across forms of the same individual or group. In here, the instrument used is different but in parallel or equivalent forms, meaning the various forms of the test must be constructed having the same content, same type of items of difficulty, and instructions for administration. For instance, Across two forms of test, we have this question. For form A, we have reduce 8 over 72 to lowest term. And in form B, we have this. In short, the instruments are similar but not identical or the same test, but of different versions measuring the same concept or skill. So, if Jane will take parallel questions in two different forms or versions all in one day, she should attain similar test results for it to be considered as reliable. For the computation, Pearson R may be used to calculate the reliability of this method. For example, we have the following scores of 10 students in first and second administration. First, we get the sum of scores. In the first administration, we got 675 while 617 on the second administration. Next, we square the scores. For this column, we got 8,100 from 90 square and 4,900 as we solve for the square of 70. Same process is applied to the rest of the scores. We also add the sum of the x squared and y squared. Once done, we then substitute all values to our Pearson formula. Next, we do the mathematical computation. And the answer is 0 0.96. Based on the table, the degree of consistency is very high. Thus, we can say that there is a strong positive correlation between the two administration or the two results. Third, we have the inter-rater. This type of reliability will involve multiple layers of judges. Hence, this is used to gauge the consistency of ratings across raters. So, in order for a scoring method to be reliable, Independent ratings by multiple judges should be highly similar. For example, in a singing competition, the five judges gave 9, 9, 9, 7, and 9 scores to Jane. Assuming that this scale goes from 1 to 10, then we can say that Jane therefore performed an outstanding job since there is consistency in the ratings across judges. In the second example, we can see that the five judges gave 5, 4, 8, 7, and 9 scores. Here, there is inconsistent ratings across the judges. Hence, this is an example of a low inter-rater reliability. And the most common is the internal consistency. This is used to measure the consistency of data across responses. This time we are looking different questions but with the same construct. The key point here is that a reliable test should contain only those questions that measure the same concept. For example, we want to measure students' efficacy. Looking at the statements, we see that all statements are measuring the same concept. However, in this construct, the last statement does not measure efficacy. Imagine a person that is high in sociability does not necessarily entail that a person has high efficacy. Hence, the last item will tend to decrease the reliability of construct. Furthermore, 
to consider it as a reliable data, the internal consistency coefficient using Cranbach Alpha must be greater than 0 0.70. Another way to measure internal consistency is by using split half reliability. In this type, a test is split into equal halves so that each examinee has two scores, one of each half of the test. Take note that the two halves of the test must be similar but not identical in content and in level of difficulty. The key point is that if a test is split into two where we have the odd versus even questions, the two halves should yield similar scores for a given individual. For example, we give a 60-item single test to a group of students. We split the test into two parts and comparing the scores on both halves. If this test is reliable, we would expect that if student 1 performed well on the 30-odd number items, then student 1 should do very well on the 30 even number. With this, there is a strong correlation between two sets of items. To compute for the reliability coefficient of other even items, we use this formula. Just like what we did earlier, we rank the scores of our odd and even scores from highest to lowest. Then, we get the difference of the ranking. We got 1 since we have 8 minus 7. Then, square it. For the next line, we have 4 minus 3.5. The difference is 0 0.5. Then, we square it. That's why we have 0 0.25. Same process is done to the rest of the data. We then get the sum of our d square, which is 48. Next, we then substitute the values of the formula. It must be noted that our n is 14, and the summation of d square is 48. So as we do the mathematical computation, the reliability coefficient of half of the test is 0.89. Next, we score the reliability of the whole test. Substituting the, val the value of the reliability of the half of the test, then doing the mathematical computation, the reliability of the whole test is 0 0.94. Looking at the table, we can say that it has a high reliability coefficient which indicates that the items measure the same thing. So before summarizing the key concepts of our lesson today, let me give you an illustration to have a clear distinction between reliability and validity. Last week, I adjusted our bathroom weighing scale. Originally, my weight was 55 kilos. With the new adjustment, I only weigh 51.4 kilos. The next morning, which is Sunday, I weigh myself and it showed that my weight is 51.4 kilos. Monday morning, it also showed 51.4 kilos. Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, and so on. With this, our bathroom weighing scale is consistently showing me 51.4 kilos. When in fact, my actual weight is 55 kilos. So in this illustration, I will ask, was the weighing scale reliable? The answer is yes, because it gives consistent results, that is 51.4 kilos. But if I ask you, was the bathroom scale valid? Of course, the answer is no, since it did not give my true weight. So here's my point. Just as a bathroom scale can consistently give me the wrong weight, similarly, a test can also yield consistent results, making it to be highly reliable. 
But if it is not measuring what it intends to measure, a test can be considered as invalid. So in summary, we can say that we are able to establish reliability when the results or the data that we collected are consistent. In addition, we consider our data to be valid when there is truthfulness in the results as it satisfies the objectives of what we are measuring. We also learned the four common types of reliability and we have the test with us reliability if you want to measure the consistency of data across administration, parallel or alternative form, if we want to gauge consistency of data across forms or versions of an instrument. Interrater reliability, if you want to measure consistency of data across raters. And internal consistency, if you want to gauge consistency of data across responses to an instrument. So that's all for our lesson on reliability. So here's my references for the content of this video. If you want to download the presentation of in PDF file, click the link in this video description. So thank you for watching. See you in my next video. Once again, this is Teacher Claire.